Hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Priyabrata Sahu. I'm the host of today's workshop, photography workshop. So we are today we are having uh, Mr. Professor Sandeep Damre. He is the um, the best, best uh, photographer. So he will conduct the today's workshop. From the, the workshop timing is 10 to 12 p.m. Over to Sandeep Damre, sir. You can take. You can start. Sir. Good morning. I hope I am audible to everyone. Yes, yes. sir. It's audible. Sir. Audible. Okay. So here I can see one, two, three, three people are there. Aparna, Lavanya, and Swan. Yes, sir. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. So I think there are more students, I think. Uh, 8 to 10. Should we wait for them? Uh, sir, today parallel session is going on another typography session. So hopefully today will come uh, and uh, some other persons who are not joining today, tomorrow they will join, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Fine. Okay, fine. So good morning to all of you. I'm Sandeep Damri from Ahmedabad and uh, I would like to thank you, ODC and Paresh Chaudhary to giving me the platform and I'm very happy that it is going to be done online also earlier it was planned physically but couldn't because of the COVID so we planned it in a such a way so that everyone can join this event so congratulations to Paresh so if you can introduce yourself and what you do it is really great if I know those who are joining and uh, their introduction, please. Uh, hello, everyone uh, who wants to speak. Uh, please say I will invite them to stage. Uh, they can introduce yourself and their hobby, why they choose the photography and all these things they can say. Uh, Subhankar, are you one? Hello. Uh, Ritam. Okay. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. So my name is Ritam Majumdar. I'm actually um, in college right now, first year, and I'm studying designing, graphic designing, to be specific. Which college? Uh, I'm in Ecole Intuit Lab. It's in Kolkata. Okay. Yeah. So why I chose photography was when I'm studying graphic designing, there's something called framing. So like in one frame, how can you um, include the important things or put it in such a way that uh, it could attract the audience? So I believe in photography, there is a similar concept. And there are lots of other concepts which are related to like related in photography and graphic designing. So I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to learn these. Yeah, great. Uh, anyone wants to say a Sovan? Okay. Good morning, sir. I'm so yeah, I'm a user experience designer based in Noida. And I do some uh, bird photography as a hobby with some basic equipment. So in general, I'm interested in photography. So I thought I should join this workshop to learn more. And yeah, it's great having you here. And I hope I'll learn something. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Good. Thank you.
Ashunesh, do you want to speak? Hello, oh, I think it's not. Uh, sir, I will introduce myself. Uh, my name is Priyogata Sahu. Uh, I am an industrial designer and I started my photography from uh, after graduation. Uh, BTEC, I am BTEC in mechanical engineering. I started my photography at graduation. I, uh, I love to travel all across the India. So from there, I inspired to take photography and I'll put in Instagram or maximum photographs in computer itself. So yes, sir. So I love the nature and uh, I love uh, landscape and portrait photography. Sir. OK. OK, sir. So um, now I can start, I think. And uh, let's start the, our uh, workshop. As uh, Pritam said, he is into graphic design uh, field or uh, the, the people are in UI, UX, and all those who are like really just love the photography and they want to do the photography. It is a uh, uh, for interpreting. So Sunesh uh, is want to join. Okay. Okay. Fine. Yes, yeah, Sunesh. Uh, excellent. Uh, I'm sending invite to you. Please accept. There you can get the speaker. Yeah. Now you can speak. Okay. So yeah, uh, my name is Sunesh. Um, so first of all, very good morning. Uh, my name is Sunish. Uh, I work. Uh, I used to work as a developer, and uh, now I am just uh, doing my journalism and mass communication with uh, Amity University. And I love to travel a lot. And I am exploring my next career option in UI UX. And uh, I used to do a lot of photography in the past. Uh, obviously, I have no idea about photography at that time. I did explore quite a bit, uh, but yeah, now I just wanted to learn something uh, in photography as a profession. Uh, you know how I can make my photograph looks better and then you know make more impactful. So that's the reason why I decided to join this section. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So most of the people uh, know uh, at least a little bit of the photography and photography equipment and how it works i think so i'm not going to uh, go with the like technical part of the camera like how aperture works and how uh, other uh, shutter speed and uh, iso how it works because each subject is a quite deep so we need at least one one week for one subject so First thing, what I understand after doing this two decades photography, I learned that that photography is not about the camera. Like this, this is just a equipment. This is a tool. If your camera doesn't mean you are a photographer, or if you click the photograph from the camera, doesn't mean you are a photographer, or you become a photographer, or you can uh, click the great pictures. You can use any tool like uh, mobile, any small camera, or you can have a uh, professional camera. These are basically tools. How you are going to use it, that is the main thing. And the, as you all must be knowing, the photograph is all about the light, like uh, it works with the light, without light camera doesn't work. So it is a light with the painting. Like if you if you are watching me, you can see there is a light coming from the, my left side on my face. So if that light is not there, you can't see me. The same way the camera how works, this webcam camera is also works on the light. So main thing is in uh, photography is the first understanding the light the light source, where light coming from. Once you understand the light, then only you can click the picture. Then second part coming in, in the important is the composition. How you place the subject, object, monument, or anything which you want to click, how you are going to place in this 
rectangle frame in in uh, you can you can you can frame like this or whenever you go you can see things through this frame uh, you can make uh, your hand as a rectangle and other way to do it you can do a small rectangle hole in the paper and through that paper you can see the things around or you can see from the like uh, camera viewfinder which is like here so once you see the subjects from the viewfinder you will know what exactly you are going to click so that is very important to what you are the subject is clicking and uh, second is how, how the lighting is there like quality of light so lighting part is very important in photography studio photography which is like uh, when i use the studio lighting and all studio lighting uh, is not that much uh, complicated thing because it's ready and fixed uh, settings for that and uh, you can do it so doing studio photography is a different uh, uh, subject and totally different thing product photography model photography but doing outdoor photography with the natural light or maybe inside the building if there is a light coming reflecting light or maybe sun sunrise sunset how you are getting that golden light so you should always like uh, keep your mind ready for that that timing like what time it should be the kind of shot you are looking for like for the sunset so what time you should be there on the spot like if the sunset is happening in like 6:30 so you have to be there at least 5 o'clock so that you can set up your uh, camera and you can do some trials before sunset and the camera setting like under exposure or exposure or whatever kind of results you want you will you, you will be prepared your model will be prepared your object will be prepared or if you are doing the uh, street photography during the sunset so you can choose the subject uh, you can just walk around once you find the subject you have to study the subject from the 360 degree you have to go all around the subject take the round and see the which is the best part as a as a lighting one one is like you you want some light on the object and you take the pictures and uh, you are looking for some golden light golden reflection or maybe water reflection another way is the same place you don't want the light on the subject you can uh, do the sell out photography uh, and you can you can have a light behind the subject like if somebody is standing exactly in front of the sun or maybe somebody just having a one uh, thela or maybe selling some chana chana mamra or anything balloons and you can put that guy or that object in front of the sun and you will get the outline of the subject and you can click the pictures as as a sill out same way another way another uh, cross angle you can uh, have then you can have some golden light on objects face or anything so two thing is the best thing for ten first is light and second is the composition so in two days uh, we we may not able to go to the any uh, places to study but in our home or maybe around us whatever the object we have we can we can shoot them and we can have a, a kind of experience of the lighting and uh, composition so composition uh, those who are like in a graphic design <clears throat> or maybe ui ux or <clears throat> they know what is what is the composition those who don't know i'll show you some slide uh, how uh, composition works and uh, how it will you, you should shoot there are certain certain uh, criteria for the basic photography you you have to follow that then only you will get the good picture better picture and shoot uh, before before shooting first you you need to study and do some homework for that then only you will get the better picture like whenever you go to some places doesn't mean you just go and start clicking don't click 
whenever you think unless or until you are doing the bird photography so bird before the bird fly you need to click it so that time you you need to be very quick and uh, very fast and servo mode uh, camera and so that usm auto focusing uh, system should be very fast apart from that you, you you should study first the place you should study the subject and don't click it because nowadays what happened this digital camera allow you to click as many as because there is a big hard drive you have you have memory card 64 gb it is and that so what people generally do they just go and start clicking 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 they must be thinking if i click 100 pictures definitely 10 will become better but it is not like that the main thing is if you don't know the composition if you don't know the framing if you don't understand the light out of 100 you will not get one single good picture there may be people will say you did very good photography or maybe general uh, those who are like crowd uh, you you are showing them uh, if they see oh this is very nice photo very nice landscape very nice subject card but it is not if you show to some expert then they will give you some proper feedback no it could be done much better there is always it could be done much better that means you are doing only 50 to 40 percent of the work compared to uh, out of 100. So uh, photography is quite uh, serious uh, work and serious subject. And uh, in in India, still we don't have any proper college for the photography. Still, even photography as a art, still uh, in India we are not considering. But photography also a uh, art, like. like painters do the painting they put colors on it they put the uh, experiment on it they use the dry brush they uh, they do lot of mixed media things sculpture and all they always consider as a this is an art and they took some efforts to uh, creativity and all that but photography is also like that if we really do uh, very seriously like if you have heard uh, gurudev Gurudev uh, Pyasa movie is very famous movie one of the Gurudev used to direct the film act the film and the uh, editing also he does in front of him everything but if you see his uh, backstage work before taking any shot he used to draw he used to sketch he used to sketch first the studio where light is coming from where the female will Uh, standing where he will stand where the camera will be he used to draw before the shoot so if you have a proper uh, preparation before the shoot and if you understand the light and framing properly definitely it will be like uh, golden straw like the kind of movie he has done so my suggestion is whenever you go if possible if you can sketch little bit you can do some pro- some sketching or you can if you are not a very good in drawing but still you can just note down the things so this will be my frame this will be my object and this is the light source and my camera will be in this direction object will be that direction and this is the time 5:30 6:30 and then i'll shoot it if it is not done properly the way you want it you have to go again next day same time same place like i also do the wildlife photography so this is the time for the birds will come to gujarat from the coastal area so i wait the whole year for them they will come and i know where they will come because i am going from more than 20 years now to the same place so first time i did mistake second time i did little bit better now i know what to do where to do and how to do that is the main thing i go exactly same place same time same lighting to try to capture the some good images of the bird like they are landing they are flying and same time you study the technical part also if you first time what happened uh, when i saw them they are flying and they are just landing on the water i got very excited and i started clicking 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 when i come home and i come to know 
the setter please setter speed was very slow so most of the images comes very easy then i started making the list so my setter speed should be like this and i also should be like this and then only i'll get some good picture so whenever i go plan so before one day i plan everything ki what camera i'll take what lenses i'll take how many batteries i'll take how many memory card i will take what could be camera settings before 6 am after 7 am and after 10 am so what could be setting that i i know everything everybody knows everything but before clicking we need to remind that ourselves okay tomorrow i am going here and so my settings should be like this so this is how uh, one should work for the photography and composition is very important whenever we do the commercial work like i do a lot of the industrial photography model photography so composition is very important one of the very key thing for this so anyone has any question uh, before i start the slides sir till now no question come uh, you can start your slides sir okay okay so i'll share the my screen i am showing you some 5 to 10 basic rules for the composition before that i just want to tell you about the camera there are a lot of camera in the market uh, from like 5000 10000 to lakhs of rupees 10 lakhs 20 lakhs also there are camera sl bed mam ya sinar which is like 4 by 5 and uh, like canon has got from like dslr basic 1200D to 5D Mark IV, Mark III, Mark II, R5. There are many cameras in the market. How to choose the camera? Let me talk about that. First thing, before buying the camera, you should know what exactly you want to do through the camera. Okay, you want to do the photography, but what kind of work you are doing? Depending on that, you should spend money on the camera. if you are not doing any professional photography or uh, commercial shoot you don't require camera like mark 2 mark 4 or uh, this kind of big cameras this camera we buy because of our client demand they want 50 megapixel 24 megapixel they want raw files this and that and they are going to enlarge up to 20 ft 80 ft because of that we need to buy a high resolution camera otherwise this camera and other camera works same result is also same like when 7 megapixel comes in the market 7 megapixel is enough to enlarge your photograph up to a 4 size or a 3 size 7 megapixel but now you can have the camera in your mobile more than 64 megapixel 108 megapixel and you will get good resolution so depending on your uh, The, uh, what you exactly you want like if you are like a trekking person uh, you are traveling uh, you are a backpacker you go every day um, here and there to trekking like himachal pradesh ladakh and chaddar trek and all that so you should have one a small camera which is like pocket camera so pocket camera is best for the backpackers so that you it's a less weight and you could uh, carry in your pocket or maybe you can uh, hang in your uh, neck with the belt so that 
you can click anywhere very easily and if you want some good quality uh, camera in uh, pocket camera you will get it a lot of camera like canon gx9 gx7 canon is a pocket camera is a good for the travel photography and that photograph can be enlarged up to 20 feet 100 feet anything because that's a, it gives you the raw images and they are mirrorless cameras with the 24 megapixel resolution 54 megapixel Another one is like if you want to do the hobby wildlife photography or you, you are not going to do the very uh, as, as a profession, then uh, you can have a Nikon P900, which is good uh, zoom uh, up to 2000x zoom is there. So that is the one of the best camera for the wild wildlife and the birding. And if you want to do birding and wildlife for a professional purpose, then you should have full frame, full frame camera like R5. And you should have zoom at least for like 600M, like 100 to 400 Canon, or maybe 70-200-2.8, or many other lenses are there. If you, just, you can just go to any camera side, you'll get a lot of the options. If you are a blogger, if you are a biker, or if you are an adventure uh, uh, 4x4 or like something like that, then you should have a camera like GoPro or maybe Insta360 or uh, maybe a small drone camera. So that whenever you travel from your bike, you can, you can just start from the pocket and you can click it. The same way you can have that camera mount on your helmet or maybe in the front and you can uh, shoot uh, the good part of the, your trip. So depend on what is your purpose for the photography. According to that, you should choose the camera. So uh, this is the basic uh, introduction about the choose the camera now coming into basic photography composition rules these are the some basic rules uh, you must be knowing or maybe if you don't know you can note down or you can take the screenshot or i'll share it on the our whatsapp group also the same slides so that whenever you want to refer you can refer it Many times what happened, even if we know composition rule, we just forgot sometimes. So even I also keep looking uh, these slides day by day if I uh, miss something. So this is how it works. The first and very important is rule of one third. In this frame, you can see there are nine boxes. And there are two points on the right, two points on the left, two points on the top, two points on. So whatever you want to click, you should compose in these two dots. If you can see my mouse, this is the one dot and this is the second dot. Okay. So whatever you are clicking, either human, the building or any anything which which is like your subject so in this frame this yellow building is my subject so i kept this on the right hand side i can keep on the left hand side also but i couldn't get that light if i put it in the left hand side same way if you are thinking about the boat you can compose the boat from this area or this area or if you want to compose the human, so that human should be composed in these two points or these two points. The same way how to divide the landscape. If this is the one thing. Second thing is landscape. Here I kept the 70% area for the sky and 30% area for the land. If we do 50-50 or if we do this object in the center, this picture doesn't speak anything but because of the rule of one third everywhere you can see properly 
and perfect lighting and you get the good sky and the land, landscape so you, you you can see this this picture properly composed in a one third rule and every screen has this kind of lines you need to go to the your setting in your mobile also you can on this grid line just to see how it looks through the grid line so you can compose correctly even though you are uh, like always have a problem many people whenever they click pictures slightly tilted on right side or left side and they didn't understand what's happening and why it is not coming correctly so if you switch on this grid line option in your mobile or uh, maybe in a, your camera then you can shoot properly so this is one of the very important part in photography either you are doing through the camera or mobile or any medium any kind of camera you should follow all this kind of rules second thing is the balancing element balancing element means you, it doesn't mean you you have to balance 50 50 or maybe weight wise or visual wise this is a kind of balancing like you can see here there is a sky and one building and on the right hand side this is the one of the board so try to get the picture with the minimalism there is no third object in this picture the le- try to get possible picture with the lesser thing so that your subject will be highlighted and eye catching so if we hide this board then this picture is be only building and if we hide the building then you see only the board so there is no connection so if we have two objects so that means a and second is b if you draw anything like simply one dot in the rectangle that means a it doesn't say anything but if you put second dot in that rectangle that means there are two things and that's a a and b and they communicate each other visually so same way we have to see so balance should be there whenever like clicking any picture so you could relate anything you can you can relate whatever your idea is saying whatever your thought behind it doesn't mean ki you have to follow what someone is watching what he thinks that's not important what you think what you want to show you, you you can try your best and you can have this kind of picture so this is the second thing and you now go to the next another uh, important area for the rules in photography that is you should always have leading lines in your picture not all the pictures have everything but like in this picture <coughs> if you see it keep you watching for at least for 1 minute 2 minute you never know it all depend on the person interest if someone is like liking uh, tracking hiking biking traveling he will love this picture and he will keep watching this picture for many times and he will try to study Uh, what it is and what things are there so you can see here uh, infinity mountains and the rivers coming through and the uh, river town is there and there are the this uh, roads are like upins it's called upin this is i clicked in ladakh and this a particular area has 20 upins means uh, there are 20 times uh, zigzag 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 so if you see the path coming from the left side then goes right then down then again down then there is a truck and after that it vanishes through the river and again river take you to the your eye movement take you to the, between the mountain till the end and you see after that the sky so that's why how it you can you can call it, it's like photo reading if your photo has a uh, story if your photo has a uh, correctly clicked it keeps you watching if you if you you are like watching a magazine like you are just going through the pages and if you stops for the some picture the the moment you stop it means that picture is something so you should click the picture that somebody should stop and watch the photo and try to 
see the photo and ask the question also ki where you have taken what time you have taken how you have taken it is very interesting picture this and that so uh, this is the leading lines one should always follow whenever they saw it can be a road it can be a grid it can be a railway track it can be a um, electric poles it can be a many things if you see around uh, you always see this uh, leading lines are there and if you click them with the subject it could be awarded picture so this is leading line now we come to like symmetry and pattern so symmetry and pattern you can see the picture if you divide this picture from the center it's a mirror image of the this building so mostly man made objects are symmetrical mostly in the buildings doors windows and many many things you can see they have a symmetry so if you find some symmetry you can you can always see if there is very interesting something like in this picture human was not there but if you could find some human is also there that could be also interesting symmetry doesn't mean it's exactly similar like here if you see right hand side that window has some flowers but left hand doesn't have right hand side there is a dustbin but left left side doesn't be but overall this building architecture is a symmetry rest of the things are subjects and that subjects could be anything uh, it, it could be a small flower it could be some kid it could be a cycle it could be a old man sitting there it could be somebody is walking it could be anything so whenever we uh, go in the old city area or maybe new building new architecture you keep observe if your observation is very good you can click very nice pictures so if you observe somewhere you find symmetry and pattern you should always click them um, sorry and next is a view point view point means the place you are clicking the image so in this picture you can see there is a beach and uh, the picture taken from the uh, top angle it's it is not taken from the drawn and there was a place to go up and click the picture and there's a man sitting on there so that whenever you want to that's what i told you before shooting you have to go there many times i am to going to shoot this area and you keep watching what is there if you see most of the people they click the picture for the beaches either sunset sunrise or left or right means they are on the beach then only that that's the only angle they click but here you can see some bird eye view bird eye view now you have drawn but Uh, without drawn also you click there there are many objects where you can find and you can place something this picture and uh, very interesting uh, way to show your creativity so view point is uh, one of the very important area so try to click pictures from the view point keep in your mind now we come to the background the water picture we click what kind of background you are looking for what kind of background it should be like this i have clicked when uh, it was performed in uh, ahmedabad natrani theater so every stage mostly they have some sponsor and their banners and their lights and lots of disturbing thing on the stage you hardly get some plain background if there is a some banner behind this so you could not concentrate on the this guy makeup their mukut hands expression and everything it disturbs so i tried to wait for this performer to go to on the corner on the right hand side there was a black board on the back side of his uh, stage so i keep waiting whenever he go to that area i click lots of pictures so that i could get exactly plain background it's that black and this image on his expression could be captured here is also i kept the one third rule i kept this guy on the right hand side not in the center so 
whenever you are clicking uh, you should you can add background also if you, if it is possible or you you can move your camera yourself from left right and then try to compose literally you can see what background uh, you really want sometimes we click and we thought background is very cluttered you can slightly hardly one feet two feet you just move left or right you'll get the good background uh, so this is the uh, one of the important area now we talk about the depth whenever we click the landscape pictures so depth should be there otherwise uh, it won't look good so in this picture you can see this is the uh, kumbhalgarh wall fort wall this is the world's second largest wall after china and it can be seen from the moon or maybe clicked images from the moon in this picture you can see the um, in front of the camera there is a temple and that is a clear and end of the mountain there is tree also that is also clear and after that the mountain is also clear but the these are the like foggy because of the fog i can't get the more clear otherwise you can get if there is a full sunlight you can get the clear image here there are two examples one is depth second is leading line also this wall take you to the end of the mountain so that's what eye movement goes from here to there so depth is one of the very important area for the photography so this kind of work you should keep your aperture setting above 11 so it should be it should be uh, i try to click on 22 in that case if shutter speed goes slow i use the tripod so that i'll get the good result so uh, getting the depth you, are, you keep working on the apertures up uh, above 11 16 18 22 32 whatever your camera allows you keep trying you know uh, more depth so this is very important whenever you click the pictures now let's talk about the framing framing means how you are framing your picture and the inside the frame also you can frame like in this picture you can see there is a, a building in uh, london it's called capsule building and this is the uh, old fort where our kohinoor is kept and there is a hundred pound to watch our own diamond so okay so i compose this old building and new building composition so you can you can imagine this uh, both the buildings they have almost four to five kilometer gap in these two buildings and i wanted to capture that old old building in the front and the, this new building on the back so it is like and there is a particular circle in that uh, fort so i try to um, place that capsule building it is like coming out from the old building like e evolution kind of thing and that shape is also very interesting this building so you can imagine if if you want to compose two buildings together which is like three to five kilometer gap in the two building and you yourself is another almost half a kilometer or one kilometer from the place so composition wise it took me almost three four hours because whenever i go so i couldn't find exactly that image go composed like this so i like keep moving 500 half a kilometer this area half a kilometer that area and the lighting london doesn't have light you must be knowing it is always dark so getting this picture it took me three four hours so if you want some particular perfect shot you have to spend some time you have to do some hard work then only you'll get some good pictures so this is a very contrast like heritage and the modern building is a in a, in a contrast uh, way i wanted to capture this so framing is very important when you're like clicking any kind of compositions next is cropping cropping means whenever you click some picture or uh, 
take that picture as a different idea. And you, you just clicked it, but you didn't have an idea. There is something interesting. Like in this picture, I found this salt and paper, this uh, kept in a such a way. And that time I didn't realize that they're in a shape of like humans. They are like uh, hugging together and I couldn't, uh, when, when I clicked, I didn't find it that day. But after clicking, I find this is very good subject and I lost it. I could take some more picture. But in that way, then you can crop them. Sometimes you may get noise also because of the you are cropping them from the big frame. But if you have a good camera, full frame camera and your aperture is like above 11, you can crop and you will not get the noise. Now we come to the experiment. In photography, one of the very important I feel is that is experiment. You should always experiment with the light and the place and the composition or anything. Because that surprises you because you don't know what is going to come as a result. So best thing is to keep experimenting. Sometimes you get very surprised. You know some experiment uh, how result will come, but what it will come, you will not know. So you should always keep experimenting with the photograph. Like in this uh, picture, I've taken in the step well, Adalaj. So in Adalaj, 12 o'clock in the light, when sun is like 90 degree, that time you get the sunlight inside this veil. It's a seven story underground step well. So uh, light comes only 12 o'clock in particular this chamber, the bottom chamber. And you can see there's a water in the bottom. It's a water source for the summer time in uh, 400 years ago and still there is a water and still it is working. So I keep watching this step well for the many times I've been there for the many times, many seasons many different different stages to see how this step well was like built and what is the lighting part because when you go inside this well there is a difference of four five degree during summer king and queen used to stay in this step well because of the summer so if you just go and click some picture of the, any architecture or monument doesn't mean you understand First thing, you have to understand the monument. If you want to click the monument, you should know how it old. Second thing is, what is the story behind this architecture? Third is, you have to move around without camera. You need to understand the lighting part. Then you can decide, you can make a note, a small diary. Okay, I'm going to click this place during this time. Or maybe the lighting should be this and that. You, you can note down and then go with the camera. Again, take a small walk, study the area, then click the pictures. Just don't just go and click the lots of pictures. And if you click lots of pictures, none of them is good. So better keep few pictures, but every picture should be like cover page of any magazine or newspaper or part of the article. So you should click in a such a way so that it should be useful for some magazine cover or exhibition or if you want to do the photography exhibition. So try to click every picture as a masterpiece. So these are the uh, basic uh, rules. I'll share it in our WhatsApp group. And you can do the, not now, after the workshop, like after like, Tomorrow, we are going to discuss some different things, but after the workshop, after two days or three days, what you can do is keep 10 pictures of rule of one third, balancing element, 10 pictures, leading line, 10 pictures. Whenever you get time, it may take one month, don't worry, but follow these rules and click 10, 10 pictures of each subject. So at least you get used to 
this subject and it will be like fit in your mind to okay i have to follow this rule here i have to follow that rule there i have to follow this rule there so this is about it now okay i stop the same. now you can ask me any question uh, about the this ppt which i shown you you can ask me any question and later i'll show you some one or two example for the what we need to do in the next half an hour or maybe one hour anyone has any question um, sir i have one question yeah he is getting any pictures in caves inside the caves so there is a so not much light inside the yeah. caves so what to do can we go for some artificial light and we'll uh, glow it and inside the caves or click the picture or any other things uh, first is uh, if you are going to click the some darker area or maybe there is a not enough light still you want to uh, click the picture so if you are going again then you can carry the light and if you are not have any plan to go again and you don't have the chance to go and still you want the picture so best is use the tripod and you can have your shutter speed slow and you can uh, your aperture you can open like you can open like 1.8 if you have like 50 mm lens then you can have 1.8 uh, aperture then you will get the even the if there is a low light you will get the picture except if the person is moving then in slow shutter speed it will not work but if, if it is a fixed building or architecture or maybe if something is not moving then you can shoot with the slow shutter speed okay sir okay sir sir but could you please uh, give tips on the uh, night photography sir night photography you need the shutter releaser have you aware about the shutter releaser ah uh, no sir okay i'll show you like this is the kind of thing uh, you can get it from the camera shop it is called shutter releaser in your camera here there is a pin and you can fix that pin here and you can use uh, shutter releaser because when you are like shooting in the night or you are shooting the milky way or maybe you are shooting the stars so that time your aperture may be go up to like 30 second 1 minute 15 minute also exposure you can do but when you do from your uh, finger here if you click like this in slow shutter speed still your camera may be get hazy and you will get not clear picture that's why you need this shutter releaser this is the wire one and you can get the wireless also like remote they they will fix it something here uh, part and uh, now the new camera doesn't also had the another thing you can have just the wireless cam uh, shutter releaser even some of the new camera they got the app in your mobile and through the app also you can do the slow shutter speed shooting so uh, first you need to like uh, try for the 1 second exposure then 5 second 10 second in the darker area then you'll know how much dark is then and how much time you'll need and milky way and the uh, stars then how much time you need you you know uh, because it is more the way i told you experimental thing you need to like keep uh, working on it and after many trials you will come to know okay my camera works in the uh, 11 aperture and 1600 iso and it takes 30 second to record the thing so this wire cable one is comes very cheap like 300 rupees or something wireless come almost 1200 rupees this shutter laser so those who have the dslr they should have this uh, shutter releaser cable yeah anything else okay sir so
So from audience, I didn't get any questions. Uh, uh, Sunesh, anything you want to speak? Okay. Okay, so you can proceed your presentation, sir. Okay. So, Many people must be knowing that these are the basic things, but still I want to repeat it. Uh, maybe some people may have not observed this. Like in this picture, you can see uh, how to hold the camera, what is right and what is the wrong. In the first picture, if you see the girl is the holding the camera and the both uh, hands are like in a, in a air. And the second, the boy using his knee as a stand to click the picture. We required whenever you are using slow shutter speed, even the normal also, you should like keep habit. If you don't have tripod, you can, you can use this kind of technique to get the better and sharp pictures. And the bottom, you can see that is mostly for the uh, we click wildlife like this because the bird on your eye level is always on the like floor. You, you have to like down on the floor or the fields. And that time uh, camera shaking will be possible. That's why you can use your both the hands and make a tripod from your hand and you can click pictures. These are the your camera accessories. Before going to any trip or shooting, you should make your checklist, this kind of checklist. Camera, lenses, filter, tripod, backpack. So every camera bag should have one checklist. And whenever you go, you tick on that. You have this, you have this, tick, tick, tick. So that sometimes it happens, you go to the trip and after when you start the camera, you come to the memory card is not there, battery is not charged. So, and the most important trip and you don't have the pictures. So, these are the some basic things one should follow this. These are the like camera bag and there are cleaning kit is also there. How should you keep your camera neat and clean? Whenever you go, it should be clean. Whenever you come from the trip, you can clean your camera. This kind of equipment you can get in the market, which is called camera cleaning kit. Do not use anything rough to clean your camera. Here you can show, see this uh, rubber eraser is using to clean this area. Because sometimes what happened because of the copper, uh, this area may get uh, some the problem with the connection and your back side of the screen it says the error so try to clean this area if uh, it is a black so you can keep use this rubber to clean that rest you can use the this brush and you can use the pump also to clean this the dust cleaner but when you are using the pump first press the pump and then put it there do not go there and press the pump there because if you are pressing their pump that means the dust is going inside and use the proper cloth to clean the lens normally lens there is some uh, soft cloth they used to give with the cleaning kit to so use that so these are the basic thing and I wanted to give you some assignments.
so our assignment will be this working with the light <coughs> these are the uh, objects you can use in your home whatever object you can find you can use any table lamp light or any light and you can click uh, pictures this is one example this is the second example here i use the chunni in front of the camera and after the chunni or you can say any cloth there is an object that is a toy that uh, that is a hippopotamus and after hippopotamus i put the torch you can put the torch you can put the any light you can put the mobile camera torch or you can use anything do this in a lesser light area not with the full light area otherwise you will not get this kind of sill out so uh, this is our assignment for today you can say understanding of the light and you need to use whatever object you have around you it can be anything it can be anything whatever you feel like it's not necessary you have to keep this kind of animal toy or anything you can keep whatever you think you can put the flower you can do whatever you feel like to do but you will get something this kind of image with the you can say it's a small studio kind of thing you can make it your own and you can click some amazing image so what happened you will understand the lighting distance the object and the subject and many things you will learn during this process so this is the oh, one assignment and you can click uh, 10 pictures and uh, you have one hour to do it do it in a one hour i think that one hour is enough and if you couldn't able to do it one 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 hour you can have another hour or maybe whenever you think he and right now you couldn't able to uh, do the this thing and i want to do something and i have to go out and buy something and then i wanted to do it you are free to do it you can do uh, whenever you feel but tomorrow morning you are going to show 10 images in this session so that uh, we'll have a discussion on uh, this images these are the some experiment i have done so this is the another example of the same thing the light is on the back side and the figure is there and after the figure there is a cloth and after that my camera is there you can say it's a sell out and you can do it in your home you can see this is the images i get during the my experiment this is the another image there is a cloth you can see that the texture of the cloth it depend uh, like the if the object is close to cloth you will get more sharper and if your object is has a distance you will get this kind of hazy images but hazy images also fine with me because we are not going to work on the sharpness of the picture we are working on the artistic point of view the understanding the light and the subject so you can do whatever you feel like to do like here i work on the some expressions you can do this kind of things so uh, this is it for i think today's session and if you have any question you can ask me i am here only till 12, 12 o'clock you can always ask me anything whatever you want to understand or uh, if you have any queries you can you can ask me or uh, you want to start the work on the subject i have given you can start the work or uh, you can take the tea break and then you can start and that will be also fine
Is that okay? Okay, sir. Sir, I am having one more question. Yeah, uh, sometimes we don't know uh, if the, uh, the lens already fun fungal infected. So how hmm. to know? Is it uh, will it visible through our uh, clicking picture or uh, uh, how to know that one? Whenever you kept the camera for the longer period uh, inside the room or somewhere, if that your camera is not uh, packed properly, then you will have this fungal infection. And mostly fungal infection doesn't affect the, your camera result if it is very less. But when you are getting the picture with the lines and the dots, that means your uh, camera has a uh, more fungal infection so then you need to give it to the company don't give it to some uh, local guy if there is a canon give it to canon company or give it to nikon nikon company works workshop they will keep clean properly because they have got proper equipment to clean that and the local people if they do little bit of this and that then your focusing will be gone and uh, if they open the lens and if they don't fix it the lens properly so your focusing will be gone so don't uh, try to give it to a local vendor like those who are not authorized if the local authorized company workshop is there give it to them otherwise what they will do they will send to mumbai via courier if you give it to them they will send to mumbai via courier and they will send back to you so uh, if the result is not coming out Haziness or some dark dhabba is there, you can always give it to the company for the cleaning. And cleaning uh, doesn't cost much, depend on the camera. So I think uh, you should always keep clean your camera. And if you're not using it for a longer time, put it in an airtight polythene so that uh, this problem will not happen. Okay, sir. Sir, but in case of if you are going for uh, a waterfall photo shoot on waterfall, so mm. there is more chances of uh, going for the uh, uh, moisture. So Mos we'll go moisture. So we'll go for the lens protector. Uh, that that would help, or any other things we need to take. Care of. Yeah, lens protector will also help, and there is a casing also. There is a casing for the underwater shooting for every camera. You can uh, buy that and then you can go inside the fall also. But you can go very close to the fall, even that water is coming or if it won't happen anything. It's a uh, waterproof casing is there. Then you can uh, click from the inside the water also. So that everything has uh, some thing to do actually. So if you have this, it is better. So no need to worry because whenever we go close to the water, we always worry about the camera it will damage or it may be uh, some problem will create like those who are doing the holy photography you must be knowing that mathura many people go and uh, especially do the holy street photography because they use lots of colors and uh, that uh, gulal dust is very thin and it will go inside the camera so in that case you should have this uh, waterproof uh, cover is there in the market and mostly people use that waterproof thing and they go then anywhere so camera will not have any problem okay sir okay so i hope uh, that uh, assignment you understand what uh, we need to do it today yes sir we'll take 10 photograph photographs yeah. uh, uh, in indoor photographs indoor photograph using the uh, any torch light or mobile light and you can use as a sell out the, the way i have shown the example okay sir right if anyone doesn't understand still they can ask me uh, any questions from audience any doubts Okay. Okay. So I'm here only. If any question, you can always uh, ask me, and uh, you can start doing it now. So that if there is any problem, you can you can speak to me now. If you are doing it something, and if there is any problem, 
you can uh, ask me so i'm here only till 12 o'clock and uh, just let me know if there is any issue yeah okay sir okay. thank you Okay. Hello, Sandeep. Hello, Sandeep. Are you there? Yes. I can hear you. I can hear you. Sandeep, you are mute, yeah? No. On it. On it. Hello. On it. Ah, Sandeep, are you speaking? Ah, on it. On it. Okay. Sandeep, what was I saying? Is it closed? Is it over today? नहीं असाइनमेंट दे दिया है उनको हाँ अभी करके दिखाएगा तो अच्छा है या फिर उनको कुछ कंफ्यूजन है तो अभी पूछ सकते हैं ठीक है ठीक है आज का जो इंट्रोडक्शन दे दिया असाइनमेंट दे दिया तो अभी वो जो असाइनमेंट करेगा उसमें कुछ प्रॉब्लम है तो अभी बिफोर ट्वेल्थ दे कैन आस्क मी एनीथिंग Okay, okay. So, Priyabhata, Sandeep sir is there. So, you will be there. Sure. Whatever things. And whatever tax given to people, students. So, they come back and let's see. Sandeep, actually, this today, actually, you will have less students. Hello, Sandeep. Because, you know, typography में सब लोग काफी लोग typography में वो भी opt किए this photography. So, typography में सब लोग वहीं पे है. आज typography खतम हो जाएगा महिंदर भाई का बारा बचे. तो बाकी जितने लोग बचे कि कल तुम्हारी पर सब भीड होगा. आज थोड़ा सा ऐसे हलका हलका दे उनको. कल थोड़ा सा main कल करना. एक दिन में खतम करना जो भी है. ऐसे बोलूँ ठीक है ठीक है तो ये प्लान तो आज थोड़ा सा इंट्रोडक्शन टाइप का दे दिया हल्का पुल्का जो भी है कुछ कर दे कल से तो मेन जो कोर एलिमेंट काली रखना हम्म ओके ओके दन ठीक है ठीक है ओके
हेलो सर हेलो 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 या आई कैन हियर यू हां प्रिय बतो यू वांट्स टू से समथिंग यस 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 टू हुम टू मी और संदीप नो टू संदीप सर ओके गो अहेड आ सर आई हैव सम क्वेश्चंस स्टिल नाउ वी डिडंट गेट एनी क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम अटेंडेंस uh and some questions sir sir for any moving object what are the things need to be considered sir example if we are, uh, our, our object is in still position and mm. we are moving in that time object in a still position and we are moving like bus train uh if we are moving in bus or train something uh. such uh, if you click the picture so you in want the, a picture uh, of uh, bus or train hazy or clear No, sir. We are inside the train. We'll hmm. click the picture outside from any landscape. Ah, that and... means that means uh, the, anyone either camera is moving or either uh, object is moving. Ah, so sir. your you, you need the high shutter speed. Okay. I'll show you on my camera. Can you see the readings? Ah. No sir, a little more zoom. Now can you see? Yes sir. Okay. So first thing ISO should be go at least sixteen hundred. you can see 1600 iso okay okay and uh, your aperture should be open like a 4 or maybe okay. 3.5 or 2.5 or 1.8 okay okay now the third setting you can set up 1 by 3 to double zero okay okay if it doesn't come 1 by 3.0 then you can increase also okay or if if you are in aperture mode then you mm -hmm. can set up this and rest of the things will be set up automatically so 1 okay. by 500 1 by 1000 1 by 3200 1 by 3600 that mm -hmm. is the shutter speed so the more you are moving the more speed you should be increase okay you can you can uh, try with uh, anything like uh, if you are go out or if you are like seeing any bike is moving and mm. you are still mm. the setting will be same either you are moving or you are not moving and object is moving and okay. depend on the speed mostly when the person walks the walking speed comes in the 1 by 60 if somebody is on cycle mm -hmm. it comes on 1 by 250 if somebody is on bike so it will go up to 1000 depend on the speed and if yes. it is uh, more than 100 km per hour that means you have to go up to 3600 or maybe 5000 or something like that so in speed the shutter speed will play the main role okay so you need to do some uh, experiments on this 1 by 60 1 by 30 like if somebody is moving you just click one picture 1 by 1 uh, 60 it comes hazy then you can increase 1 by 250 then you, still it's hazy then you can do 1 by 500 still hazy then you can go 1 by 1000 so mostly on birds when the birds fly i keep yeah. like uh, 500 to 1000 in between so bird when bird taking take off or landing mm -hmm. it will come very sharp when i use uh, 1 by 500 and above so bike is more faster than bird uh, landing and uh, flying and the uh, train is much faster than bike so you can keep roughly 1000 to 3000 between that So once so, you do this, 
keep uh, like two three settings so once the picture will come sharp then you will come to know okay this speed and this uh, uh, i need the sharpness so this speed will be better okay sir so but okay. in case uh, if you are uh, okay but in that time uh, the continuous speed shutter also it will work na sir yeah continuous speed uh, continuous shutter also work and also you keep on the is open image stabilizer have you aware image stabilizer it is there it in this area there is a switch for image stabilization so you should keep on that image stabilizer otherwise picture will come hazy got it okay okay sir you. you can try this if you try then only you will know what exactly speed uh, will be comfortable in your camera okay got it sir okay Sir, for wildlife photography, uh, um, uh, every day we you are going, na, sir. Uh, we need to go to the same place. Example for the birds you are suggesting. This is the right time to go. December, January, February, and first week of March. This is the right time to do uh, a birding because lots of Siberian, Mongolia, all the flamingos and painted stork and the. Uh, rough they come to many parts of the india especially in coastal area they land and after yes. that they go inside the small small lakes so this is the perfect time for the birding photography okay i where are you from uh, sir i am from odisha uh, you can go chilika lake ah uh, yes. you can go chilika lake chilika lake is one of the biggest lake for the birds Yes, sir. and lots of flamingos and uh, laser uh, flamingos uh, visit there. In Gujarat also there, mm -hmm. but I think uh, in your area you get more in the quantity because the size of the lake is quite big compared to like what we have here in Nalsarovar. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, but I am staying in now in Mumbai, sir. Okay, so Mumbai also in suburb, the, there are lots of flamingo uh, move around in that area. last year lots of people click very beautiful picture of the flamingo like they are in a flocks and means in the very very large quantity in last two years the flamingo yes. going to in like uh, this area mumbai suburb area okay i will exactly let you know the place because uh, i know someone who okay. click that picture there i will let you know the place and uh, you should join this uh, bombay nature history club have you aware bombay history club no i don't uh, you should join them and they keep uh, the activities there they also do the tagging also to the birds tagging means the birds like i have one picture tag which is uh, tagged in mongolia and that oh. mongolia that crane travel through all over the mountains of himalaya and they come to gujarat so i click that picture and there is like one of the one of my achievement just tagging picture uh, getting the tagging which is really difficult yeah sir right, right. so uh, you should uh, join this club bombay nature history yes and they got lots of bird education then how to do the tagging and their habitat and their nature behavior they have keep sessions there i wish it could be there it's called uh, B bhs uh, something short form is there okay so uh, there, there is a proper office in mumbai and uh, i think sanjay gandhi national park i think they have office. i think so i'm not sure but you can get it in google Uh, Sanjay Gandhi, sir, I didn't get much. 
Uh, but in uh, if you go to Alibak uh, in that area by uh, through uh, mm-hmm. Gateway of India ferry, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then uh, the on the way so many birds are coming, sir. That is uh, seagull. Okay, okay. These birds are coming. I took some okay. pictures. Great. You can share me also later whenever you feel it. Because ah, uh, I very really much uh, like this wildlife and uh, birding work. Right? So I sure. keep attending workshop also and I keep taking workshop also. So in a both way, I want to keep myself in busy in that. I enjoy a lot that. So whenever you come to Gajarat, let me know. I'll take you some places. Sure, sir. Okay. Some pictures I shared you sir in Instagram. Okay, I'll check it. Uh, this picture feature in uh, in Pune they are having a uh, design festival. Uh, sorry, uh, photography festival. Okay. Last last year this was featured. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Here is also this uh, Nalsarovarna. If you go with this uh, Gathia, they called it Gathia in Gujarat. If okay. you give them, there are I mean, thousands of seagulls will be around you. Mm-hmm. And they take you via boat. Okay. So do visit if you are interested in birding. Do visit on the boat. There are almost four or five centuries around here. Yes, sir. In Kajiranga, also, I took some pictures, sir. I went to Kopitra. Kopitra. Uh, that's the uh, world's largest density of uh, rhino. In a like square feet, in the square feet. Kopitra, where is it, sir? It's uh, near Jagi Road. Okay. Assam. Acha, Assam. Ha, I, I was there in I was there in Kajiranga. Ah, Kajiranga uh, is also Assam. Uh, but Kajiranga is a bigger place, yes. but less rhinos and bigger okay. rhinos. And this Kopitra has small place. And lots of rhino, but size wise they are small. Okay, okay. So you okay. will get good capture. Yeah, okay. very good. Busy. You can like be like uh, 20, 30 feet close to them. Oh. And uh, very close to Jagi Road. Uh, mm-hmm. Jagi Road is uh, like when you go Kajiranga via Guwahati. Yes. Guwahati to if you go Kajiranga, it comes in the center. Yes, yes. It's called Popitra. Very nice place. Untouched area. Hardly people go. But very beautiful landscape. I've been there. And yes. very nice pictures. And the, even the landscape picture also very nice. Popitra. Also, this area has wild elephant. Not in the century. Out of century. Right, right, right. Around this area, there are elephants also. Mm. In, in, in Assam, is more uh, rhino and uh, elephant. Yeah, yeah, they are wild elephant because I've seen some huts on the tree. So I oh. thought they made for like you know, farmers. So they said, no, these are not the farmers. This is for us, those who are like going via this road. We will what to do that. They said when elephant come now, you can just stop the car or anything and you can just climb the tree. And there's a uh, later is there. You can just go and sit there. Otherwise, sometimes if they are angry, and they, they will break you, your car, they will just run on behind you. So it's a dangerous. So, so that was very surprising. Okay. And have you been that uh, this one, sir? Uh, Dauki River, Meghalaya? Yeah, I've been to Meghalaya. Uh, I've been to Seven Sisters and uh, the caves and so many areas I've seen. I think uh, <clears throat> maybe uh, not m- much. I think in 2019 itself, I have been there before COVID. Okay. It's an amazing area. I wish I could go again. 
Yes, sir. I, I missed that the you know the bridge, uh, the root root break. I I have been there. I did the uh, trekking uh, around the for five, six seven hours trekking there. I wanted to go, but I didn't have the time, and I hire a mo motorcycle there uh, from Guwahati, and yes. I ride the uh, bullet from there to Meghalaya, and I roam around. But I the all the time it was raining. Uh, two three days I was like wet only, morning oh. to evening the full day rain, so I was very uncomfortable to that using the map. Okay. Even I wrap my mobile with the two, three polythene, still that water goes inside and the mobile is gone. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. But in, uh, when we visited in Assam, Meghalaya, uh, there was luckily no raining was there. And uh, uh, we visited that, sir, that, uh, sh sh uh, that one uh, lake is there that is completely crystal clear. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we visited that like uh, by breaking. If you do the uh, double route and single route, two bridges are there. Okay. So we gone through first the single route will come, then the double uh, route bridge will come. The so both the things are nearby or they are in a different different places. No, no, in, in same way, sir. If you, I think same way. Okay. Ah, sir, okay. trekking area. So okay. you can't go through bike. You need to. Uh, there are the, some steps and ha. Huh, you go by walk only. Okay. There are some steps and uh, need to walk also. Okay. Okay. I'll definitely plan again to go especially for that place. Yeah, nice. And uh, I couldn't, even Seven Sister was, I couldn't see properly because lots of rain was there that time. Hmm. And uh, the cloud was also there. Because of the cloud, I couldn't see properly the Seven Sister. I've been there two, two times. One first time I been to in the summer, and okay. that time the waterfall was not there. And during rainy season I been there. The waterfall was there, but the fog and the cloud was lots of cloud was there. Yes, sir. But uh, I'll go again because I have some friends there. They always call me. Oh, okay, definitely I'll come. Great. So, sir. so uh, do some work for sure, sir. Uh, to, in your place and uh, we'll have a look in the morning and then we will start the second session tomorrow then. sure sir so mm -hmm. now i'm ending this session sir okay okay fine okay fine. thank you so much sir for thank joining you so much. thank you